Okay, so I'm going to attempt a speed run here. In the spirit of this reloading video, I wanted to go through a few of the things. I'm going to go through, I've just, I'm working up a set of loads for my red, white, and blue gun. I think I've got it fixed finally. And uh, I figured, you know what, I'm down to where I'm going to shoot another run here. And I figured I'm going to load, show you my whole loading sequence right on through. And uh, how I document what I do here because I finally got this gun shooting in a way that's tunable for me. It's going into one hole. And I wanted to go through and uh, I'm going to make give it an attempt and see if in my 20 minutes I can load these. I'm not going to shoot them. That's one thing I'm going to warn you right now. Shooting, uh, it's starting to get blustery. I need to put some flags out. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to load up this next set. And I'm showing you what and why and how I... Most importantly, this is about how I keep my records so that you can see that I'm not, well, it's not that you can see that I'm not faking this stuff. Let's say I start by, and you've seen this before, I'm using my thumbnail and my fingers and I'm getting just the neck. Alright, let's start with that. Then I reach around with this hand and I give this a little roll at the base where it sizes. I keep the whole shoulder area dry and that's important. Run this through my little funky die here. I pick up the next one and I do my best to keep the amount of wax on my fingers very consistent. And when I rub my fingers like this, that's okay because I'm my fingers are essentially dry. I could lick them. And, so I do the neck using my thumbnail. I roll around here, give it a little bit. This is how I put it in the press. Boom! In the press. Go. Got one more to do here. We're going to spin around jump shot. We're going to do us some priming. And I'm going to show you my powder loading sequence. And uh, this is just what I'm doing right now today. This is my this is my current today's woke workup. So now we come around over this way a little further. Well, first I'll wipe these off. I grab this. Wipe these cases off super hyper duper clean. I'm using an old white t-shirt here because this way when it gets oily and greasy I can chuck it. It's uh, I had a blue rag here last time and it was starting to get oily and the problem with a blue rag is you can't really tell when it's getting impregnated. I say oily. I mean the sizing wax essentially. Getting waxy. And once you're not cleaning off the residue, I'm anal about keeping my chambers clean and dry as much as possible. So there we've got them sized. Now let's come over here, see if we can turn this camera and get toward the, uh, the other operations here. See, what I really want to do is see if we can get a read on that scale. I really want you to see the scale. No, I don't think this is going to work. When I've done this in the past, I've had a different setup going. I'm going to have to do some weirdness. Can I get... Okay, I think I've got the scale reading well enough that I'm going to show the loading sequence. I think I'm in here. I'm just using a cheap old priming tool here. I am totally not caring. This is just to get me close. This is not, even though these loads are shooting well enough to win a match, this is my load workup. It's fast. It's dirty. So I settled on, I'm going to show you my notepad here. Today is March 12th. I'm regrouping with red, white, and blue 300 WSM. I start. I was at 58, and I started working my way down, and I'm not recording any of this. I got down to 57 flat. It's starting to come together. I finally wrote a yes. I got a group. 56.8, it's still fine. Still loaded long. I'm still resetting. The cases. This is interesting because I keep a log of my cases. Pre-sized 2.084, sized 2.084, fired again 2.082 to 2.084, next loading. 
56.6, I'm coming down. It's starting to get blustery, wretched, but more than that, it was. I thought it was more than the wind. This was starting to loosen up. This started to tighten up up here at uh, prior, up here at like 57.2, 57.3. So my thought is that I'm coming down, I'm coming out the bottom of the node. 56.6, I feel like I'm out the bottom of the node. So I'm headed back up for 56.9. Try. Cases, pre-sized, 084, sized, 084, fired again, same, 084, 1 at 085. Now I'm getting ready to go to my next, and I figured, okay, I'm going to note this down. So our target here is 56.9. The one that's on there is... 56.96, 56.88 to 9, there we go, 56.9, that's close enough for a 100 yard load workup. I drop this in over here, bring this around, uh, I forgot to reset the thing, you gotta trust me on that one. Okay, so, there we are at 57.2, so that's a little heavy, and our target is 56.9. So as that thing there is pumping out another one, I'm going to go over here, off camera, I'm using a press here, boom, loaded. Okay, 56.94, 56.92, I take some out, I have wiped the wax off my fingers because wax kills powder, 56.9, here we go, dump another one, come on baby, this, there we go, this goes over here, this goes, these are weighed at 100.78. Oh, there goes that phone again. Why am I always working? Okay, I'm going to have to call that guy back. It's one of my workers out on a job. I'm supposed to go move a truck today. So, it is important, but I'm playing boss. I'm slipping in between here. Biggity bang! Biggity bang! He's going to have to wait a couple of minutes. 56.98. 56.98. Drop one kernel on there. 56.9. 9 to 9, 2. That's close enough. I'm, I'm not splitting kernels here. I don't ever split kernels, but the point is, I'm getting my ES down to the toilet. Okay, so we're at 57.14. Got to slam another bullet in here. Racing the clocker. Bang. Dink. And I just realized that this ain't going to work anyway because I forgot to put a battery <laughs> I'm still running that camera on power. 56.9. I'm moving my hands around so fast. A part of that is errant wind currents. But for what I'm doing, I'm just setting up for my next load before I go down and deal with this job where that guy just called from. So, I might even be bumping the camera when I slide back here. I think I am. But hopefully you're getting what I'm doing here which is rotated 56.92, I could leave that one. I'm going to take out one kernel of powder, let it settle down. Close enough. This is a 100.78 grain tray. They're all weighted to that. Some of them have tape on them. Put tape on them, they all weigh the same. I can run them through here. 57.28, that one's way heavy. Go clear up to here. Slap another bullet, slide. I'm not showing you the press. If you don't know how to seat bullets, this video is not for you, dude. Go back to playing video games because seating bullets is not something I need to show you. 56.94. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Wind, die. I'm going to take one more out. One more kernel. 56.9. Biggity bang, biggity bang. There we are. So, there's the loading sequence. Now, because I screwed this video up, um, there's the loads for next time. Here's the notepad for next time. And I'm going to have to shut this camera off. Why is this reading point 12? Who? Okay, so there's an example of something that while I was running around this scale drifted. 
these are, I need to write that down. See, this is the kind of thing. Note. Note. Scale. Drift. Add or subtract. This is where my rudimentary math skills. It already shows. So, subtract. Subtract. Point one two grain. Doesn't really matter because I'm kind of in the middle of the node. What you don't know, and I'm not going to try to even go through how to find the center of the node. What you don't know is that I spent some time my match load for years was 58 on other guns. I'm starting to find out that um, this red, white, and blue gun doesn't like to be slapped that hard. Uh, I, I'm almost, I'm at the point where I think I just need to drop the velocity down to 2700 and leave it there. That's 2700 with 230 grain. What I'm loading here is 230 grain burger OTM tacticals this is essentially my load I just wanted to share my setup here I'm gonna go ahead and zero this cover it back up for those of you that use these type of scales I have a dedicated power supply I've got grounding wires taped to the sides of this thing and run up to a, a switch over here which Maybe you can even see if I read. Anyway, this scale is grounded and it bleeds off really well. But I've found that the biggest thing that screws these up is even minor temperature swings. So I come in here to work and I open the door and the temperature in here changes by 5 or 6 degrees. Maybe warmer, maybe cooler. I start running in and out to the range. Basically, I open the window in the other room at the range and I start shooting and coming in and the temperature in here falls a little bit. And my scale goes a little wonky to recover. So I'm going to say, I'm going to share with you that my thoughts are that the biggest thing that affects some of these electronic scales is temperature variations. This is not set on a granite slab or anything. It's set on a good solid tight. And it's, you know, it'll sit there on zero for days under this cover. Because all of the changes are subtle. But you open a door, you let the temperature in the room start doing this. I think you're all going to probably find that it's going to funkify your scale settings. So, here we are. I'm going to shut this thing off, put a battery in it so I can turn around and run down to the range and show you. I'll, I'll bring my pads with me. I'm going to show you what we're finding here before I head out to get the truck that this guy just called me about on a job site.